Hello and welcome. In this video I will show you how equations of motion can be used to solve physics problems. In this video you will see a few examples of questions taken from CIE past papers. Let's get started. Let's start by making a list of data given in the question. First, we know that the initial velocity of the insect was 1 meter per second. We also know that the insect reaches maximum height, which means that the insect has to stop at the maximum height, so final velocity is zero. And we also know that the insect reaches 3.5 times 10 to negative 3 meters, so that's the maximal height reached by the insect. In this question, we have to calculate the acceleration. We can start with this equation that we have covered in one of our previous videos by putting the initial information into this equation. We've got 0 equals u squared minus 2ah. Now we can just rearrange this equation, so 2ah equals to u squared. We can further rearrange to find the acceleration, which is u squared divided by 2h. Now we just need to replace all the symbols with numerical values which gives us our final result of 14.3 meters per second squared. Let's once again start by making a list of information given in the question. First, we know that this is a 100 meter race, so the total distance is 100 meters. We know that initially a sprinter is moving with the acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. We also know that the sprinter reaches the maximum speed of 10 meters per second which is also going to be the constant speed that he will carry on traveling with until the end of the race. Our task is to calculate the total time traveled by the sprinter. Let's draw the total distance traveled by this athlete. Well, we can divide the total distance into two sections. Section S1, in which the sprinter is moving with accelerated motion, and section S2, in which the sprinter is moving with a constant speed. In the first section, the sprinter is moving with uniformly accelerated motion, so we can use the definition of acceleration, which is A equals V over T. This will allow us to calculate the time that the sprinter needs to travel the first section. Now, knowing the time, we can now calculate the length of the first distance, using this equation for distance in uniformly accelerated motion. Since initial velocity is zero, we can just say that S1 equals a t squared divided by 2, and after putting the numerical values, we get 20 meters. We know that the total length of the race is 100 meters, so by subtracting 20 from 100, we can calculate the distance of the second section, in which the athlete is moving with a uniform motion, so we can use this equation v equals s over t. We can calculate the time that it will take the athlete to travel the second section, which is 8 seconds. Now we can calculate the total time for the whole race, which is time for the first section plus time for the second section, which will give us 12 seconds. In this question we know the initial velocity, which is 5.2 meters per second. We also know that the object returns to its starting point, uh, which means that it will be moving vertically down, which means that the final velocity can be assumed to be minus 5.2 meters per second. The acceleration on the moon is 1.62 meters per second squared, so let's just write that down. And our question is to calculate the total time. Since the object is moving with a uniformly accelerated motion, we can use the definition of acceleration, A equals delta V divided by delta T. Since change in velocity is final minus initial velocity, we can write A equals V minus U divided by delta T. We can now rearrange this equation to make delta T a subject. Now we can just replace the symbols with numerical values. Please remember that final velocity was negative, so we've got minus 5.2, minus initial velocity, which was positive, so another 5.2, and divided by acceleration, which is also negative, because acceleration was in opposite direction to the initial velocity. 
our calculation will give us 6.4 seconds. On the outward journey, the aircraft is traveling with 600 km per hour, and on the return journey, the aircraft is traveling with a speed of 400 km per hour. And we have to calculate the average speed. Let's draw the situation. On the outward journey, the aircraft is traveling with the velocity V0, and on the return journey, the aircraft is traveling with the velocity VR. For the first section of the flight, we can write that V outward is equal to S divided by T outward, which allows us to calculate TO. We can do the same for the second leg of the journey. This time V return, VR, is equal to the same distance divided by TR, which gives us TR equals S over VR. Now we can use our first equation, so we can replace the total distance with 2s and the total time with to plus tr. If we use the expressions from the two lines above, we've got 2s divided by s divided by v0 plus s divided by vr. After some algebra, we are getting 2 divided by 1 divided by v0 plus 1 divided by vr. Now we can replace all the symbols with numerical values and we get our final value of 480 km per hour. This time we know that the goods train is traveling at constant speed of 10 meters per second. We also know that the express train is stationary at the station and will move with the uniformly accelerated motion with acceleration of 0.5 meters per second. We have to calculate the time that it will take for the express to catch up with the goods train. Let's draw the situation. The goods train is traveling with the constant velocity which is shown on this top diagram. And on the bottom diagram, we can see an express train moving from zero velocity with uniformly accelerated motion with acceleration A. Goods train is moving with constant speed, so we can write that S equals velocity times time. Express train is moving with uniformly accelerated motion, so the same distance will be calculated as ut plus at squared divided by 2. By comparing these two equations we get vt equals ut plus at squared divided by 2 and since initial velocity of the accelerating train was 0 we get vt equals at squared divided by 2. After some more algebra we're getting that t equals tv over a which gives us the total time of 40 seconds. Let's first consider object falling through a distance x. Since the object is moving with uniformly accelerated motion, we can say that x equals 80 squared divided by 2. We can also write the second equation for the object falling through both distance x and h. So the total distance x plus h is equal to a t2 squared divided by 2. Now we can subtract the first equation from the second. And after some algebra, we get the final expression for the acceleration, which is a equals to 2h divided by t2 squared minus t1 squared. This is an example of the question in which the same situation is more or less happening twice. First the train is traveling with the speed u, and then the speed of the train is increased by 20% which means that we can write that u1 is equal to 1.2u, which is 
you plus 20 percent so on this top diagram we can see a train traveling with the speed u and the train has to stop after traveling certain distance in the bottom diagram we see a train traveling slightly faster faster by 20 percent that's why the second train is moving with the speed of 1.2 u in this question we can use v squared equals to u squared plus 2as since both trains have to stop so final velocity is zero that's why we've got zero equals to u squared plus 2as and we can write the same equation again but this time for the second train so instead of u we've got 1.2 u squared plus 2a and now we can use slightly different distance as one we can make a a subject of both equations and now we can compare the right sides of both equations quite a few things will cancel out in our equation and after some more algebra we get that s1 is equal to 1.44 s In this case we are dealing with simultaneous motion in vertical and horizontal direction. I hope that you remember that in a situation like this horizontally the motorbike will move at a constant speed. That's why the distance d is equal to u times t. At the same time the motorbike will fall through a height h with uniformly accelerated motion. That's why we can write h equals to gt squared divided by 2. We can use this equation to calculate the total time to fall through the height of 1.25 meters. This time is square root of 2h divided by g. Now we can substitute this time into our phase equation. Then we need to rearrange this equation to make u the subject and after putting the numerical values we get our final result which is 20 meters per second. I hope that examples I've shown you will help you to understand how equations of motion can be used to solve physics problems. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next Easy Physics video. Yeah.